Welcome to the Fair Housing Insiders. We are so thankful that you joined us. Uh, and please remember to subscribe here on our YouTube channel or follow and like us on your favorite social media outlet, which you can find links to in our show notes for even more fair housing news and insights. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fair Housing Insiders, episode 83. We are talking about the holidays today. So appropriate that we get into this topic. I'm Jonathan Saar, and joining me today is the Vice President of the Fair Housing Institute, Michael Coughlin. We're going to be discussing this uh, a little bit more detail today. Uh, we appreciate this topic and its timeliness. For many people, it's a special time of year. But it's also for housing providers can bring some additional stress or confusion when it comes to their day to day operations. So we're going to dive in and see how we can uh, do our very best to not commit a fair housing no no. So Michael, thank you for being available to talk about this subject. So does the use of holiday decorations have fair housing implications? Uh, thanks, John and Jonathan. Always glad to be here and talk about. Uh this topic, which is always the top of everybody's minds once that time of year rolls around. Uh, so yes, they do have fair housing implications. Um, we're talking mainly about the protected category of religion here. Um, so obviously there are quite a few religious holidays throughout the year. Uh, once you get around to what you know we call the holiday season around December, you're usually talking about um, you know Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, obviously, but this applies to really any religious holiday. So we're not talking about Thanksgiving or July Fourth. You know, we're talking about religious holidays here and the decorations that you put and how they could potentially impact your residents, applicants, guests, anybody that's on your property. Okay, very good. Yeah, so timely, good reminders. We need them. So let's cut to the chase here. What should a housing provider be aware of when decorating for the holidays? So there's quite a few things to be aware of. Uh, first of all, you know, obviously we've, you know, if you got, if you want to decorate your property with the holidays, you absolutely should, but there's just a lot to keep in mind when you're doing that. It, it can be great for your residents. Obviously it's probably nice for the staff too, uh, but there are different types of decorations. So there are uh, decorations that are considered secular, uh, which means they don't have significant religious Im implications, even if you maybe think they do, uh, the uh, HUD and the courts don't think so. And then there are some that are just universally considered very religious, and those can cause some more problems. So when we're talking about secular decorations, you know, for Christmas, uh, a Christmas tree, a wreath, um, even a sign that says Merry Christmas, uh, those are considered secular. So really, they are not religious in nature. Um, even for Hanukkah, a menorah, a sign that says Happy Hanukkah, again, these are considered secular. So, you know, you could feel free to put these up around your office. Um, I, we do recommend if you're going to decorate for one holiday that you decorate for multiple mm -hmm. um, to uh, recognize as many religions as you can. Uh, that's always a best practice. Um, the ones that you want to probably shy away from usually are um, things that are considered religious, like uh, crosses, nativity scenes, uh, the Star of David. Um, there are several different types of religious symbols that would con be considered a religious item. So that can potentially show favoritism to one religion and not another. Um, it's not that you can't use these. It's this, once you start using those, again, you need to make sure that you were representing other religions in your decorations as well. Uh, versus the secular ones, it doesn't have that kind of implication. Digibull is a marketing and technology company specializing in the multifamily housing industry. We're a motley crew of industry professionals who all share a passion for a common purpose. To transform the apartment marketing industry through creative, data-driven, digital marketing and technology solutions and world-class client support. Contact us today at digibull.com. Okay. Thank you for that. Very nice explanation. So that's for the housing provider. So let's just focus on the residents for a moment. So if a housing provider allows residents to decorate their common areas or their doors, what types of issues could result? 
Okay, yeah, this is kind of a two-parter. So for the common areas, I, I, you know, obviously this can be stressful all in itself. You have to get a bunch of residents to decorate a room and agree what that's going to look like, both between themselves and with management. That can be complicated. Um, but you know, you absolutely can allow residents to decorate those spaces. You just kind of have to think of what we just talked about with the last question, where if they start putting up decorations that have um, a religious implications that you need to show that inclusiveness with other religions as well. Um, again, you can try to go the route of just keeping things secular, but if residents are decorated themselves, they may want to kind of insist on having certain things that they like. Um, obviously, like nativity scenes are very popular around Christmas, but those are absolutely religious um, symbols and uh, depictions. So um, you'd have to be very careful there. Um, when it comes to uh, decorating their own spaces, like their doors, their patios, it kind of depends on what your rules are. So if there are some uh, housing providers that do not allow you to like decorate your patio or your door, you know, no no signs or anything like that. If you have those rules, you can enforce them here as well. But if you do allow decorations, then you kind of have to let them put whatever they want uh, on there. Like again, any type of decoration, even if it is religious, because it's it's their right to do that on their own property. Um, the only thing you can kind of enforce is decorations that are objectively offensive. And um, those usually don't have anything to do with the holidays anyway. So it's really not a holiday decoration issue. It's more just a, a resident issue. So thanks for that explanation, Michael. So one more for us today. Can you have a rule that prohibits residents from decorating common areas? Absolutely, you can. Um, so having residents decorate the common areas is more of just a thing, fun thing that management might choose to do. Uh, but again, it can cause some problems. So you know, if if you think you can, you know, if it's not going to upset too many residents, it may be a best practice to not allow them to decorate those common areas. So yes, that is absolutely fine for you to say that we're not letting residents decorate the common areas. We're going to do it. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Lots of legal implications. So a very timely subject for all of our property management audience. So thank you for taking the time, Michael, to help us and give us some practical reminders. So thank you everyone for tuning into our show. This has been episode 83 of the Fair Housing Insiders. Until next time, take care, everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you for joining us. And we can't wait to hear your feedback about today's episode. Do you have a topic that you would like to see discussed in a future episode? Feel free to share that with us. In the show notes, you'll see a link to sign up for our newsletter. This newsletter will keep you up to date with our latest episodes, blogs, and information about our online fair housing courses. Thank you again, and happy training.